there is uh, new data out from old school football. So Michael Strahan has kind of forever, you know, at, and forever is a short term nowadays. No. But uh, but he has been recognized by the NFL as the uh, regular season sack leader for several years now. I still think that the last sack that he got to break the record was kind of a joke because it was handed to him. But either way, um, you know, 20 years now that the NFL has, uh, has belonged to Michael Strahan, he had 22 and a half in 2001. But Pro Football Reference has been going back through uh, these old NFL game books and whatnot, and former Lions Pro Bowler Al Bubba Baker actually hit 23 sacks during his 1978 Defensive Rookie of the Year campaign. Uh, these, of course, the Pro Football uh, Reference numbers are unofficial, but you know, I, is this like they've used official NFL game books? They, they've logged unofficial tackle totals for decades. Do we kind of start looking at some of these records and and maybe go all the way back to as long as we have books? Like, why, you know, <laughs> Patrick why said... Have we, we not done that in the past? I don't know the answer to that. I, no, and Patrick asked, are we taking away the Brett Favre sack? We, I don't think they're taking anything away no, from, they from Strahan. They didn't make his number smaller. They're no. looking back and seeing... Other people had more sacks in the past that were not no officially just went back that far and added them up. Yeah, because they didn't tally sacks back in like the seventies. Yeah, they just they just tallied tackles, and and so now they're going back and look. My question is, how much film do we have? How are they reading this? Like, I mean, these game I know books they didn't call them like, sacks. Yeah, these game books they've got to go back. I mean, th- this one goes all the way back to nineteen seventy eight. So I mean, we're going almost fifty years back now. I. I mean, well, maybe, 78, we got plenty of film. All these games were were, were, were being recorded then, so that's not yeah. a, that's not an issue. Um, I mean, I don't. This is stuff I don't care about really. Like you, you know me. I don't. I like to look back at history of the game. Okay. Yeah. And basically, I look back at history of the game to see greatness or not, um, nostalgia, where we were, and how the game is played now. But I don't. I don't really care about like specific records, like none of that matters. If a, if a player I loved had a record. Okay. And then somebody comes around and beats that record that I hate. Like, I don't, that doesn't change anything for me. I don't, I don't really care. I do like the idea of getting stuff accurate though. Like, yes. Like you shouldn't be upset that they took this away from straight, but this is just one of those things where I, do you think the people, this is a completely different question that are going back and re-watching all this stuff and re-documenting this, are they happy with their life or do they just want to put the revolver in their mouth and end it all? Because <laughs> that sounds like... I sitting love looking at football, numbers all day, every day. But just watching 76, you know, year football film of the Detroit Tight Lions, like, just sounds like, kill me now. Just, just here's a thousand <laughs> bucks to a drifter and, and just don't let me see it coming. I mean, maybe... Like I think there are some people that actually enjoy this. They enjoy the stats. They enjoy diving through the numbers. Um, and I think it's I think it's okay for us to go through and and find the actual numbers. Like I'm I'm, yeah, okay, I'm okay with, with it. Being that. That. I, what we can't do is ten years from now or twenty years from now, another group of nerds lock themselves in a closet and then come out with different results from 1975. Like, wait a minute, hang on, no. People already looked at this and came up with it, but, but they were wrong and they saw it differently. And really, the numbers look like this. This is what I can't handle us doing. Yeah, no, I, I tend to agree. Uh, Patrick said, I know Derek Thomas is the true college football single season tack holder. Yeah, he is. Um, but they were also keeping stats for sacks in 1986 when he did it. So, uh, yeah. it's, you know, it's a different thing. Uh, if we were relitigating statistical records, wouldn't be surprised if Dick Night Train Lane holds most records. Yeah, probably so, just on name alone. I'll- <laughs> yeah. Well, and I was about to say, I mean, if you start going back to where they just didn't keep stats the way they keep stats now and, and trying to relitigate numbers, I'm going to bet our record books would look a lot different. They would yes. just, they just would. But my, at the, I guess, same question to the, you know, the tattoo five, Jesus, what a dumbass name. Um, to what end? Uh, yeah. I mean, like, <laughs> Okay. Yeah. I, I, At some point in, like, in time, I, I, I guess we want historical accuracy. All right. That's yeah. like that's that's fine. But Jesus, man, like we didn't keep stats on sacks back then, so we just don't count 
how many sacks that person had. Like the game was just played so differently. And we didn't know that tackling a quarterback behind the line of scrimmage was viewed differently than it is now. Yeah. We didn't know it would ever be viewed as what it is today. I I'm with you. I'm with you. Uh, I just find, I just find all that weird. (laughs) It is. It certainly is. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.